Hi, it's George. How are you doing today? What I'd like to do in this video is show you how to program a ventilator for a patient that requires mechanical ventilation, invasive mechanical ventilation. So let's kind of create a hypothetical scenario. Let's say you've got a patient that comes in for a, narco a narcotic overdose or, or something like that. It's a normal patient that has no respiratory impairment, etc. But they have an airway in place, they have an endotracheal tube, and they're receiving bag valve mass ventilation, but they need mechanical ventilation. Patient weighs 70 kilos, ideal body weight. You've got a PB980 ventilator to use. Let's get the ventilator ready to ventilate the patient and set the appropriate values for this patient. So here's our 980 ventilator. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it on. Now the pre-use check has already been done on the ventilator, so we don't have to worry about doing that. Also, we've chosen to volume ventilate our patient. So we're going to volume ventilate our patient. We're going to choose a square waveform, as well as we're going to choose the appropriate tidal volume and rest period for the patient as well. Now we're going to assume the patient's normal, no ventilatory impairment, young, young patient, 70 kilos, I, uh, male, ideal body weight. We get the ventilator on, previous check, like I said, has been done. <clears throat> Somebody else is providing ventilation for our patient at this time. You are adhering to all the safety protocols and practices of your hospital, so you've donned the appropriate protective equipment. All you need to do now is set the ventilator up, set the alarms, and you should be good to go. So let's zoom in. And let me just adjust this a bit so you can see more of it and less of me. All right, so we're going to choose new patient. When we pull up the new patient screen, you'll remember from the previous videos, it's going to allow you to choose between the gender or the ideal body weight. When you choose the ideal body weight, it's going to preset some values for you. So we're going to choose 70 kilos since our patient's already 70 kilos in size. And I'm just using that rotary knob at the bottom of the screen that you can't see right now to set the value. So 70 kilos is what we want. We're choosing invasive ventilation. I'm going to go assist control mode, volume ventilation with a flow trigger. So once I've done all that, which is the default, so there really isn't very much to do with that, we can now go and set our values. Now because this patient's normal, I'm going to start probably with a respiratory rate anywhere between 12 to 20. So I'm going to start at a rate of 15. So I've got 3 to 15 programmed. Now they are 70 kilos, so if you go 6 mils per kilo, 6 times 70 is 420, 420 mils, which the ventilator has already programmed in. I'm going to change the waveform now to rectangular, because that's going to adjust my TI, TE, and IE ratio. So I've got it set to square. Now the IE ratio that I've got based on that tidal volume with that flow rate with a square waveform, it's giving me an I time of 0.42 seconds and an need time of 3.58 seconds, which is displayed right down here. Let's see if you can see that. So those numbers I'm getting are coming from this, this scale right down there. So 0.42 second I time, 3.58 second E time gives me an I ratio of 1 to 8.52, which if you know IE ratios, that's not appropriate. So what I need to do is make some adjustments here to get a more normalized IE ratio for my patient. So one way that I can do that, if you remember through our ventilation dynamics, is to take that flow rate, because 61 liters per minute is kind of high. Let's adjust that down. And as I turn that flow rate down, what that's going to do is it's going to start lengthening my inspiratory time, because I want to have an inspiratory time probably around that one second mark. So we're reducing that down, and as I'm doing, reducing the flow rate, the I time is, is increasing. So there, I'm right around 30 liters a minute. I've got 0.84 seconds for an eye time and an eye ratio 1 to 3.76, which is kind of more normalized. So we'll leave that set to that value right over there. <clears throat> now the next things I need to set on that side of the screen, my flow sensitivity. Now again, it's independent. It's based on the trigger, trigger capabilities of your patients, but you can go anywhere between 2 to 3 liters per minute with that one. FiO2, no lung impairment with this patient. They're oxygenating fine on the baggers, so I can go a little bit lower with that. So I'm going to start off at 50. Set that one. High pressure, 
Don't know what the pressure is going to be because I'm volume ventilating, but I'm going to set it to 30 as a safety. And the PEEP, there's no cerebral impairment, so we're going to start at PEEP level 5, but you can start at 5 to 6 centimeters of water pressure, somewhere around there. So those are some of the basic settings that we've got programmed onto our ventilator right now. Now it's your option or choice whether you want to go into the alarm profile and set your alarms. So we've already got our, we've already got our high pressure alarm set to 30. What we can do is we can now set our respiratory rate alarm. It defaults to off. We've programmed our respiratory rate to 15. We don't know if the patient's going to trigger, but we can set this if we wanted to to maybe around <clears throat> 22, which is about seven breaths above what the patient's rate is, anywhere between you know four to six, somewhere in there. So we'll set it to 22. The rest of these alarms right over here, we've got our minute ventilation total alarm. You want to set that once you saw what your patient's minute ventilation was and set it appropriately, 10 to 20 percent above or below. Your tidal volume mandatory alarm, so that'd be your tidal volume alarm setting right over here. And then your tidal volume alarm if you had any spontaneous breaths, which you won't since your, your patient is in a uh, fully supported mode of ventilation. Apnea, you could technically set all your alarm values and your backup ventilation for apnea if you, once you transfer your patient to a spontaneous mode of ventilation. So we've set up the ventilator back in our main screen. Everything's good to go there. We've set our, some of our alarms, got that set up. Now all we'd have to do is hit start. We would start ventilating our patient. Once you start ventilating your patient, you can go back and uh, readjust your settings as required on your ventilator. But of course, go back and set your, your alarm. So continue to assess your patient set your ventilator up, uh, change your ventilator settings as you require according to your patient's presentation, the clinical findings that you get as you ventilate your patient, your blood gases, SpO2 values, etc. And make your changes appropriately to stabilize the patient and eventually wean to extubation as well. And anytime you're making a change in assessing your patient, always go back and check your alarms to make sure your alarms are still appropriate for that patient as well. So that is kind of how you set the ventilator up with some specific values based on a patient. What we're going to do in the next video is show you how to transition from the bag valve mask to the ventilator and let the ventilator ventilate a patient, or in this case, a simulated patient. So hope you found this informative. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Let me know how I can make it better. Till next time, have yourself a great day wherever you are in the world. Take care.